Hello and welcome to Edusati. Now we'll be covering the topic of mensuration and 3D geometry. Let's look at it. Mensuration is a branch of maths which deals with the study of different geometrical shapes, their areas and their volume. It's all basically about the process of measurement. How are you measuring the, you know, their areas, their volumes and everything that is included in the case of mensuration. The two types of geometrical figures, one is 2D and the other one which we'll be talking about is 3D. If I talk about 2D shapes, 2D shapes, I can calculate their perimeter and their areas. The cases of 2D are square, rectangle, parallelogram, rhombus, triangle, trapezium, circle, etc. So basically whatever we have done till now in geometry, we have already done the case of circles, triangles, quadrilaterals, polygons, everything that we have done till now and all the formulas that we have learned for their areas, for their heights, for their perimeters and all uh, are basically a part of 2D geometry. 3D, for a 3D figure, I'll have the surface area and the volume. And the figure that we'll be talking about would be figures like cube, cuboids, cylinder, cone, sphere, hemisphere, prism and pyramid. Now, most of the thing in 2D we have already covered. In case you still have a problem with the formulas, you can always refer to our website edusati.com and look at the formula sheets. The formula sheets will contain the formulas for perimeters and area of all the 2D and 3D figures. So I'll not concentrate here on 2D because we have already done that but there's only one part of 2D that we need to look at is the path is the part of rectangular pathways. So if you look at it these are rectangular pathways that you have inside a triangle. You can always find out the area and the perimeter of these rectangular pathways. Now you have two choices either you can remember the formulas that you have on your right hand side however i always recommend not to remember too many formulas and use the concept in finding out the areas and the perimeters of this figure so if you look at the figure that you have here you know uh, this l and b are the lengths and the width of the internal one so the outer one will have a length which is actually equal to l plus 2w and width which is actually equal to B plus 2W. So in order to find out the area of the shaded region, you can look at the area of outer minus the area of inner. So for outer, it will be L plus 2W into B plus 2W minus L into B. That is the thing that I would recommend. Similarly here, the outer will be L into B. The inner will be, the inner will be L minus 2W into B minus 2W. W. If you subtract, you will get the areas for both the figures. And if you have to find out the perimeter, the perimeter would be actually the sum of all the things. So what do you do? You add 2L plus 2B plus, what is this? L minus 2W, B minus 2W, L minus 2W and B minus 2W. You keep on adding them and you will get your formula. So if you can do it with concept, it is much more beneficial rather than remembering the formulas. It's your choice. The formulas are already there for perimeters and areas. Let's move to 3D figures now. 3D figures can be classified into two, prism and pyramid. Prism. What happens in case of prism is the base and the top are same. So if the figure has a similar base and a similar top and the base and top are connected with the help of faces. So you can imagine a case where you have a circular base and a circular top and, the, and it is connected with faces which are vertical faces which are connecting the top and the bottom. The figure that you get is a prism. It is connected with vertical faces. If the number of sides in the base are 3, it will be termed as triangular prism. So the naming of a prism depends upon the number of sides in the base. If the number of sides in the base are 6, it will be a hexagonal prism that I will have. The volume of a prism would be given by the general result which is 
area of the base into height so if i can calculate the area of the base if the base is in the form of a triangle i'll use the area of triangle if the base is in the form of a square i'll use the area of square and so on and multiply it with the height of the figure i'll get the volume of that figure the curved surface area curved surface area is the area of the curved part only that means i'm not including the area of the base and area of the top in the curved surface area that is equal to the perimeter of the base into the height so area of the base into height gives me volume perimeter of the base into height gives me the curved surface area in case i have to find out the total surface area into this curved surface area that i have i'll add the area of the base and the area of the top so i'll basically do a twice the area of the base because the base and the area of the top are same in case of uh, this that you have now let's talk about a case of pyramid in case of pyramid the base and top are dissimilar there's actually a base there's no top the top is in the form of a single vertex all the edges of the base are connected with the top vertex base is connected with the top vertex by the help of angular faces now in general if i have to write the volume of any pyramid it will be given by 1/3 the area of base into area of, sorry into height so if i compare the two results that i have it was area of the base into height volume of a pyramid is 1/3 of the volume of a prism for a same base and same height However, I cannot find out the curved surface area for this because it is not a symmetrical figure that I have. Let's look at the various cases of prism first. The first one we'll talk about is cube and cuboid. This is how a cubes look like. So if you talk about the base, the base, this is the base that I have. It's a square base and the top all the base and the top are similar and it is connected by this is the edge of the base this is the edge of the base of the top this is connected by the help of vertical faces this is one face this will be the another such face which is which will be connecting this edge of the base with this edge of the top there will be the front face and the back face that i will have so in case of a cuboid the base is in the form of a square so the two sides would be equal and the height that means the the length of the vertical faces is also equal to the length of the uh, edges for the base so l is equal to b is equal to h now in case of a cube i have two faces which are top and the bottom and four vertical faces a so total of six faces is what i have in case of cube and i have eight vertices four vertices on the base and four vertices on the top two vertices join give rise to an edge so there will be four edges in the base four edges in the top and four edges which are vertical which are formed by joining the vertex of the top and the bottom so there are 12 edges that i have so a cube is a three dimensional solid object bounded by six square faces three meeting at each vertex if you look at at each vertex there are three faces which are meeting it has 12 edges as we have already calculated six faces and eight vertices all the faces of the cube are congruent to each other and all the 12 edges that you have got are also of the same length which is equal to l let's look at cuboid the major difference between a cube and cuboid is the base the base in the in the in a cuboid is not in the shape of a square it is a shape of a rectangle that we have so cuboid is a three dimensional solid object bounded with six faces obviously but the faces are not square faces they are rectangular faces they have their own length width and height each face of a cuboid is in the form of a rectangle and all the cuboid's vertices are 90 degree angles it's something like a rectangular box that we have the number of faces vertices and edges will remain the same the only difference being that faces instead of being square would become rectangular l, l is not equal to b and not equal to h now if i have to find if i have to find the areas and the volumes for a cube it will be the curved surface area would be given by 4a square 
it's basically the perimeter of the base which will be 4a into the height which will be a and the total surface area is your curved surface area plus the area of top and the area of bottom which is 6a square total volume is given by area of the base which will be a square into height which will be a cube now if i talk about diagonals it will have 12 face diagonals two diagonals on every face a total of 12 and to find out the diagonal i'll use pythagoras theorem this diagonal will be equal to a square plus a square it will be root 2 a and there will be four body diagonals body diagonals are the diagonals which are passing through the body the length of each body diagonal would be given by root 3 a so body diagonal would be greater than the face diagonal Let's look at the case of cube, cuboid, it has 8 vertices, so 4 basically would be lengths, 4 breadths and 4 heights. The 12 edges that you have, 4 of them would be equal, another 4 which are breadths would be equal and the last 4 would be treated as heights. So if you talk about the curved surface area would be given by the perimeter of the base which will be 2L plus B into height. So it will be 2 times H into L plus B. The total surface area will be the curved surface area that you have plus the area of base and the area of top. The volume would be given by the area of the base into its height. So it will be L into B into H. All the formulas can be derived from the basic thing that we have. Now here, since all the faces are rectangular in nature, the length of the face diagonal would be given by Pythagoras theorem depending upon which dimensions are you taking. So if it is between L and B, it will be under root of L square plus B square. If it is between B and H, it will be under root of B square plus H square. And if it is L and B, it was L square plus H square whole square root. The total of 12 phase diagonals that you have are divided in four, uh, sorry, divided in three categories, each accounting to four in number. The body diagonals four that you will have will all be equal and the length of each body diagonal would be given by square root of L square plus B square plus H square. This body diagonal is the length of the longest rod that can be adjusted in this cube. Length of the longest rod that can be adjusted here. Let's look at the next case which is the case of cylinder. This is how a cylinder looks like. For a cylinder, it is a prism with a circular base and a circular top. So I have a circular base and a circular top connected with faces. So if you look at it, this will be the height of the cylinder that I'll have and the base since it is in the form of a, since it is in the form uh, of uh, a cylinder, I will, uh, sorry, since it is in the form of a uh, circle, I'll have the radius coming into picture. So a cylinder is a solid, uh, closed solid thing that have two parallel circular bases connected by a cu curved surface. When you unroll a cylinder, you will find that the curved surface open up to form a rectangle. So if you remove the base and the top, what you are only left with is a curved surface. Cut out from one of the edge and open it. It will be in the form of a rectangle that you will have. Let's look at the next case, which is a case of cone. I need not explain you the cone. It's something like an ice cream cone inverted. So you have two dimensions to be taken care of. One is the radius of the base. The base is in the form of a square and height. Now, if you look at a co cone, cone is not cone is not the case of a prism. It is the case of a pyramid because the base and the top are not similar. In fact, there is no top at all. The top is only in the form of a vertex, which is connected to the base with the help of angular faces. This is how a cone looks like. It has a circular base and a single vertex. Uh, if the vertex is over the center of the base, it is known as right circular cone. So if you uh, draw, if you join uh, the vertex with the center and if they are if they are in same line it is the right cone that we have so let's look at the formulas for cylinder and cone the curved surface area would be given by perimeter of the base so perimeter of the base is 2 pi r into its height so the formula is 2 pi r the total surface area will be the curved surface area plus the area of the bottom plus the area of the top so i'll get the formula 2 pi r r plus h i have 
volume area of the base a base is in the form of a circular into height which will give me the volume of the cylinder coming to cone cone is not a prism that i have it's a case of pyramid so i'll have to remember the formula for curved surface area since i don't have a normal thing to remember pi r l and the total surface area will be given by the curved surface area plus the area of the base so i can take pi r common it will be r plus l the volume would be given by 1 by 3 area of the base which is pi r square into h this will be the volume that you'll have for a cone let's move ahead and let's look at uh, some prisms and pyramids which are not the standard ones so if you have a right prism for any prism uh the curved surface area would be given by perimeter of the base into its height so if it's a uh, if it is a hexagonal prism i'll have 6 times a which is the perimeter of the base into height the total surface area will be given by 2 times the area of the base which is the area of the base and area of the top plus the curved surface area or the lateral surface area that i have already find out and the volume would be given by area of the base into height for a pyramid the lateral surface area could be also calculated with the formula which is half perimeter of the base into slant height i need to calculate the slant height in order to find out the curved surface area and total surface area would be lateral surface area which i have already calculated as the formula is half into perimeter of the base into slant height plus the area of the base and the volume will be 1/3 the area of base into height as already discussed Let's come to the case of square uh, sphere. Sphere could not be categorized into either prism or pyramid. So sphere will be a case that will neither fit into the two category, and its curved surface area or the total surface area would be given by the formula four pi r square. Uh, note here that the curved surface area and the total surface area would be equal because there is probably no top and no bottom that you have. The volume of a sphere is given by four by three. pi r cube for a hemisphere the curved surface area will be half the curved surface area of a sphere so 4 pi r square divided by 2 would give you give you 2 pi r square in order to find out the total surface area in the curved surface area i'll have to add the area of the base because when i make it as a hemisphere there is a circular base which is added so area will be pi r square therefore i get 3 pi r square and the volume would be half of the volume of the cube so it will be 2 by 3 pi r cube that i will have let's look at the case of spherical shell now uh, when i talk about a spherical shell I'll not be able to find out the curved surface area for these kind of figures because it's very very difficult for me to look at these kind of figures and find out the curved surface area. However, I can find out the total surface area. In case it's a closed shell, the curved surface area or the sorry, or the total surface area would come out to be actually equal. So I look at the total surface area, which is given by four pi. R square plus small r square, where capital R is the radius of the outer shell, and small r is the radius of the inner shell. The volume would be given by actually the volume of outer sphere minus the volume of inner sphere. So if I look at it, the volume of outer sphere is given by four by three pi r cube, and volume of inner sphere is given by four by three pi small r cube. If I subtract them, I get the volume of a spherical shell. coming on to the last one it is the frustum of a cone now whenever i am talking about a frustum of a cone the figure which is formed that means the total figure to the part which is removed is always is always in the similar triangles or always in proportional so if i look at it the total height of the figure h will be equal to the height sorry uh, will uh, when divided by the height which has been removed will be proportional to the original radius to the radius of the thing which has been removed equal to the total slant height 
over the slant height of the thing which has been removed so the two triangles that you get will turn out to be similar and therefore the corresponding sides would be proportional that i have in order to find out the volume of these kind of figure i'll take the volume of the bigger cone subtract the volume of the smaller cone and i'll get to my answer that's an easy way out instead of remembering the formulas however if you want to remember the formulas the formulas are there in front of you you can always memorize the formulas as well but i would suggest in order to find out the volume find the volume of the total cone which will be 1 by 3 pi r square h subtract the volume of the smaller cone which will be 1 by 3 pi small r square and small h the small r and small h can be found out from this relationship and then put into the formulas to get to your answer